moment the gates to Jurassic Park opened, we're greeted by towering, roaring dinosaurs that feel all too real. But what if everything you thought you knew, those sharp-toothed velociraptors, that deafening T-Rex roar, was built on a lie? Hollywood magic gave us unforgettable scenes, but it also gave us deeply flawed science. These dinosaurs weren't just terrifying predators. They were characters redesigned for maximum entertainment. From the way they walked to how they sounded to even their skin, Jurassic Park got more wrong than right. Let's begin this journey of uncovering fiction versus reality. Because the truth about dinosaurs is even more fascinating than the blockbuster version. Buckle up everything you think you know about dinosaurs is about to be challenged. And once you see these creatures for what they really were, you'll never watch Jurassic Park the same way again. Let's start with one of the biggest myths, the Velociraptor. In Jurassic Park, these creatures are man-sized hunting in packs opening doors and killing with cold precision. But in reality, true Velociraptors were about the size of a turkey covered in feathers and lived in what is now Mongolia. They were intelligent for dinosaurs, yes, but not door-unlocking geniuses. What Spielberg's team actually used for inspiration was a different species, Deinonychus. Even that dinosaur was exaggerated in size and behavior. The idea of coordinated pack hunting, more speculation than fact. Scientists today believe raptors were likely more solitary, and their intelligence, while notable, didn't rival primates. So where did these terrifying movie predators come from? A blend of misunderstood fossils, creative license, and a desire to thrill. Jurassic Park turned science into spectacle, but at a cost. It made a monster out of a misunderstood bird-like creature. Now let's talk about the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of dinosaurs, and the film's undisputed star. That roar iconic, the shaky ground and thundering footsteps, unforgettable. But here's the reality, T-Rex likely didn't roar at all. Scientists think it made deep low frequency sounds more like a crocodile's rumble or even an elephant's infrasonic hum. As for the thundering footsteps, probably exaggerated. T-Rex was huge, yes, but its weight would have been distributed to move surprisingly efficiently for such a massive predator. And what about that vision? It can't see you if you don't move. The film tells us that line completely false. T-Rex had excellent eyesight, even better than a hawk's. The idea that it relied solely on movement comes from a misunderstanding of predator vision. Jurassic Park gave us an unstoppable monster. In truth, T-Rex was smart, sharp-eyed, and terrifying in its own natural way, not the clumsy brute portrayed on screen. One of the most visually stunning inaccuracies in Jurassic Park lies in the skin. Every dinosaur is shown with leathery reptilian scales, sleek, menacing, and often dark-colored. But fossils tell a different story. Many theropod dinosaurs, including relatives of T-Rex and raptors, were likely covered in feathers. Yes, feathers. Bright, colorful, insulating plumage, more bird than lizard. The idea of feathered dinosaurs was once controversial, but by the early 2000s, fossil evidence from China confirmed it. So why did Jurassic Park skip the feathers? Because it didn't look scary enough. A giant bird of prey didn't sell tickets like a scaly monster did. But imagine how much more intriguing these creatures would be if portrayed accurately, vibrant, strange, bird-like predators stalking ancient forests. Jurassic Park gave us horror. Nature gave us evolution. And the truth is, dinosaurs didn't go extinct. They just evolved into birds. Speaking of birds, Jurassic Park completely misses the fact that modern birds are living dinosaurs. This isn't a theory, it's a scientific fact. Birds share a direct lineage with theropods, like Velociraptors and T. rex. They have similar bones, nesting behaviors, and even the wishbone that helps them fly. But in the movie, dinosaurs are portrayed as completely alien from the modern world, as if they vanished and left no descendants. This separation fuels the fantasy, but it disconnects us from one of the most exciting truths in science. We see dinosaurs every day. The pigeon 
on the street, the eagle in the sky, the hummingbird at your feeder. These are not just bird-like creatures. They are real living dinosaurs. Jurassic Park treated dinosaurs as a closed chapter. But they're still here, soaring through the skies, whispering secrets of their ancient past in every flap of their wings. Another Hollywood twist, speed and agility. In the film, Gallimant moose stampede across the plains at high speeds, velociraptors leap like gymnasts, and even the massive T. Rex turns corners with shocking grace. But how fast were these animals really? Most likely, not nearly as fast as Jurassic Park suggests. T. Rex, for instance, was heavy up to nine tons. Biomechanical models show it likely ran at speeds closer to 12, 15 miles per hour, not the 30 to 40 meter mopa the movie implies. Gallimimus may have been quick, but raptors, not the super speed demons you saw on screen. Their agility was real, but physics sets limits even for dinosaurs. Jurassic Park made dinosaurs feel like predators from an action movie, impossibly fast, impossibly agile. But real dinosaurs lived within the bounds of nature, not cinema. And even with those limits, their biology is still nothing short of incredible. Then there's the Dilophosaurus, made famous in the film for its frilled neck and venom-spitting ability. It's a thrilling scene, but total fiction. There is no evidence that Dilophosaurus had a frill or could spit venom. In fact, the real animal was much larger, around 20 feet long, and probably didn't look anything like its movie counterpart. The idea of a venom-spitting dinosaur was borrowed from modern reptiles like cobras and the frill pure invention. Why add it? Because it looked cool. Because it made for a more shocking death scene. This is where Jurassic Park becomes more fantasy than science. It takes real names, slaps on imaginary traits, and gives us a creature that never existed. That's not storytelling, it's distortion. And it's part of a pattern that repeats again and again, sacrifice accuracy for shock. But in doing so, it robbed Dilophosaurus of its real unique identity in the prehistoric world. Let's not forget the Brachiosaurus, one of the film's gentler giants. The majestic moment when it rears up to eat leaves is cinematic gold, but scientifically flawed. Brachiosaurus may not have been able to raise its front body like that due to the structure of its vertebrae and immense weight. Even its nostrils shown at the top of the head in the movie were later discovered to be farther down the snout. And those sounds, no one knows exactly how sauropods vocalized, but the movie's deep bellows were pure speculation. Jurassic Park gave us a peaceful, awe-inspiring creature, but not necessarily an accurate one. And this matters because these gentle giants were real animals with real biology, not fantasy props. Misrepresenting them turns ancient wonder into fiction. The truth is just as amazing, if not more so. These creatures could grow over 80 feet, 80 feet long, eat hundreds of pounds of plants daily, and live for decades. They didn't need extra drama. They already were nature's marvels. Beyond the dinosaurs themselves, Jurassic Park made bold assumptions about genetics. In the film, dinosaur DNA is extracted from mosquitoes in amber and completed with frog DNA. It's a brilliant plot device, but completely implausible. DNA degrades over time. After millions of years, even in amber, it's too fragmented to reconstruct a genome. And adding frog DNA, that would never produce a functional dinosaur. Genetic reconstruction is far more complex. We're making strides in de-extinction science with species that went extinct just decades ago, like the woolly mammoth. But dinosaurs, that's still science fiction. Jurassic Park sells the dream of resurrection. But it's a dream built on impossible science. Yet even in that dream lies the real question, if we could bring back dinosaurs, should we? That moral dilemma is more pressing than the mechanics of cloning. Because understanding the truth isn't just about accuracy, it's about responsibility. So what did Jurassic Park really get wrong? 
the size of raptors, the sounds of T-Rex, the feathers, the speed, the behavior, the biology, the DNA, almost everything really. But despite the errors, the film did one thing remarkably well. It inspired. It made people curious. It sent a generation running to museums, opening books, and asking questions. And for that, we can forgive a few cinematic sins. But now it's time to go deeper, to embrace the truth that's more surprising than the fiction. Dinosaurs weren't monsters. They were animals, complex, evolving, thriving. Some had feathers. Some lived in polar regions. Some are flying above you right now. Jurassic Park created legends. Science reveals reality. And in that reality, dinosaurs aren't just movie stars. They're part of the story of life itself. So next time you re-watch Jurassic Park, do it with new eyes. The real dinosaurs deserve it. Jurassic Park filled our ears with deafening roars, but most of those sounds were inventions. In reality, dinosaurs likely communicated very differently. Many theropods like T. rex probably produced low-frequency rumbles or closed-mouth vocalizations similar to crocodiles or even doves. Some species may have used body language tail movements or color displays instead of loud noises. Think less Godzilla scream and more earthquake hum. Fossilized inner ear bones help paleocontologists estimate which sounds certain dinosaurs could hear and make. And it turns out many were built to detect subtle vibrations rather than loud calls. Imagine ancient forests, not filled with monstrous bellows, but with subtle clicks, footbeats, and quiet signals. This paints a picture of dinosaur life that is more complex and possibly even more eerie. Jurassic Park gave us sound for drama. Nature preferred stealth subtlety and precision. Jurassic Park shows dinosaurs living together regardless of era or environment. T-Rex walks beside Brachiosaurus, Dilophosaurus hunts, where velociraptors roam all in one lush island setting. But in reality, these species lived in vastly different times and regions. Brachiosaurus was from the Jurassic period. T-Rex lived 80 million years later in the Cretaceous. Mixing them would be like putting woolly mammoths beside saber-toothed cats and modern-day lions. It looks cool, but it's nonsense. Even their ecosystems were different. Some lived in arid deserts, others in tropical forests, still others near coastlines. Jurassic Park combined them for cinematic variety, but it erased the rich ecological stories behind these creatures. Understanding where they lived it helps us understand how they survived, hunted, reproduced, and interacted. The film gave us a zoo of dinosaurs. Science gives us a living, evolving planet. Despite its flaws, Jurassic Park did something few films ever achieve. It sparked a global fascination with paleontology. It inspired kids to become scientists, museums to grow their exhibits, and audiences to ask questions. The film nailed one thing awe, that feeling when the Brachiosaurus lifts its head or the raptor stalk their prey. That emotional power is real. And some things were grounded in science, like the link between dinosaurs and birds, or the way DNA could hold secrets millions of years old. Even its errors served a purpose. They opened conversations. So yes, Jurassic Park got a lot wrong, but it also got people interested in finding what's right.